Let's look more closely at the engine failure after V1 procedure. The first indication this crew had of an engine failure was when the airplane began to yaw. The responsibility of the pilot flying is to maintain directional control with the rudder pedals. The pilot not flying advises that there has been an engine failure. Engine failure. When directional control is established, use a normal rotation rate. The airplane should become airborne at 10 to 11 degrees pitch and may require more elevator force than a normal takeoff due to the elevator trim being set for two engine performance. After a positive rate of climb is established, the pilot flying calls gear up and the pilot not flying verifies the positive rate of climb and retracts the landing gear. Gear up. Gear up. The flight director pitch command will provide a speed of V2 to V2 plus 20 knots. The pilot must limit bank angle to 15 degrees until airspeed reaches V2 plus 15 knots. When passing 400 feet, the pilot flying calls for the appropriate roll mode. Heading select. In this case, heading select. An engine failure will turn on the master caution, some annunciator lights, and some lights on the overhead panel. Check master caution. Master caution and annunciator lights are consistent with engine failure. Reset master caution. When the airplane is under control and climbing safely, you can tell if the correct amount of rudder is being applied by checking if the control wheel is level. When the airplane is maintaining heading, if the control wheel is not level, rudder should be applied in the direction the control wheel is turning. In this case, left rudder. Rudder pedal pressure may be relieved by use of the rudder trim. The auto throttles should be disengaged to prevent automatic thrust reduction during climb. The flashing auto throttle disconnect light can be extinguished by pressing the throttle disconnect switch again or by pressing the disconnect light. At flap retraction altitude, 800 feet in training, the pilot flying calls for the MCP speed bug to be set to the flaps up maneuver speed. 210 knots at this weight. If takeoff path is obstacle limited, it may be necessary to use zero rate of climb. Set speed 210. The flight director will provide appropriate pitch commands for acceleration. Flaps should be retracted utilizing speed tape or maneuvering speed schedule. Lap one. As the airplane accelerates, less rudder input is required to maintain directional control. Laps up. Up, up. When the airspeed reaches the flaps up maneuvering speed, the pilot flying calls for level change. Level change? The flight director pitch will command the MCP selected speed. Remain in level change until all obstructions are cleared. Set max okay. continuous thrust. If an immediate landing is not possible, select the engine in operative schedule from the climb page. If the airplane is in trim, the autopilot may be used to reduce workload. Set a autopilot to command. Any speed or thrust 
change will require rudder trim adjustment. Engine failure and shutdown checklist. Accomplish the engine failure and shutdown checklist only when flight conditions permit. The first item is to close the thrust lever. Thrust lever, close. The pilot flying confirms with the pilot not flying the failed engine. Confirm number two. Confirm. The next note is not necessary as the engine has already failed. The next checklist item is to disconnect the auto throttles if they are engaged. Auto throttle, if engaged, disengage. It is disengaged. Start lever, cut off. Verify number two. The pilot flying verifies that the correct start lever is to be cut off. APU, if available, start and on bus. The checklist should be stopped until the APU generator has been placed on the right bus. This is a good time to advise ATC of the engine failure. Advise ATC of our problem. Request radar vectors for an ILS approach. Grant County, Boeing Trainer 3-3. We've experienced an engine failure. Request radar vectors for ILS approach. Boeing Trainer 33, turn right, heading 140 for vectors to an ILS, runway 32 right. Descend to 4,000 feet. Right turn, heading 140, descending to 4,000, Boeing Trainer 33. When the APU is up to speed and the blue APU gen off bus light is on, the APU generator should be placed on the right bus. Now you can continue with the checklist. Fuel balance. Checking the fuel quantity gauges will tell you if fuel balancing is necessary. Balance the fuel. If fuel balance is necessary, use the supplementary normal procedure. If wing anti-ice is required, if wing anti-ice is required, it is necessary to turn the pack off on the affected side. This action will open the isolation valve if the switch is in auto, allowing air from the operating engine to cross over and provide heat to the opposite wing. The TAT is plus 16, not required. Engine failure and shutdown checklist complete to the one engine and operative landing checklist. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist, air conditioning and pressurization will return to departure airport. Start switches, off. Landing gear, up and off. Flaps, up, no lights. After takeoff checklist, complete. Boeing trainer 33, descend and maintain 3,000 feet. Departing 4,000 for 3,000, Boeing trainer 33. This completes the engine failure after V1 takeoff procedure.